Hello and welcome, this is Skars Tine. Today we're talking a little bit about Heilung. We have Maria, Chris and Kai here. Welcome to Finland. Thank you. Thank you so much. A uh, couple of months ago you released your third album and now you're having a little tour with quite a many rituals. Uh, how are you feeling? How's it going right now? Fantastic. It's, um it's good to be back on the road, and um, and what I particularly like about this tour is that we are beginning home, so to say, in Scandinavia. Mm. Normally, we would uh, be traveling quite far to to do our concert, so it, it feels more natural that you start from home and then slowly uh, move out. Mm. And we've played in Finland a couple of times before, so so it's good to be back. Mm. Great. Uh, it's been a while now since uh, you released the album. Uh, how has people received it? What kind of feedback are you getting? So, extremely well. It's a very exciting to, to see people's reactions because it's a very varied album. Uh, it has uh, much uh, of uh, quiet and, and then a lot of bombastic stuff. And, and it's, it's hitting, uh, every song is hitting people in a different way. And I think it's, uh, yeah, it has been extremely exciting also to play um, Anuama uh, live, which came with a video. And uh, yeah, it's been very well received, I must say. Great. Um, to those who might not have listened to it that much or do not know Heilung that well, uh, what's the most important things you want people to know about this album? Most important? What do you want? It's people? out there, get it. <laughs> <laughs> like listen to it, really. That that is what I would would have to say about yeah. it. Right? You can listen. get everything by listening to the album. That's what we made it for, right? And uh now not everything. Like if you want everything you need to buy the big wooden box. Because <laughs> then you get everything. You get the LP and you get some download code it's and you get the no, it's <laughs> maybe they reprint it. Let's, 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 yeah, let's, let's, let's do that. Yeah. No, what, what, you, what you get then, of course, <clears throat> I was just half, half joking, but it would also give you access to the, to the huge uh, uh, visual work in Heilung, which, which you just can't access when you just buy the CD or listen to it mm. on Spotify, mm -hmm. right? Mm. Mm. Yeah, because what many uh, what some people might not know is that um, uh, all the graphic art from Heilung is drawn by Kai, which also is a, a well-renowned tattoo artist. So when we work, we uh, don't have time to do that so much anymore. Wonder why. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so uh, so when we work with music, it's uh, the artwork is grown simultaneously mm. as the audio. So it is a journey to, to get the physical copy of, of the album to also take that journey in pictures taken by Kai and artwork drawn by Kai and then manipulated by, by Chris. Uh, yeah. The thing, the concept of Island is, is actually manipulating with, with all the different senses you mm. have, right? So you can, like on stage, you can hear and see and even smell Heilung, right, with the incense. And, but also in the books, you can see the artwork, you can hear the sounds. And also we have been releasing some uh, uh, beverages uh, so you can also taste it's mm. right? mm. great. Uh, you said that Drift kind of dictated its path on its own and the songs wrote themselves. Is it easy for you to come up with new music or do you need some kind of creative mode? Or is it like it, it just comes naturally? Mm. How is the process? Well, it usually starts with, with, with Kai coming in with the source material. Uh, and, and I can tell you that list of source material is not shrinking, it's growing hmm. at the moment. Uh, and we are like running as fast as we can to, to achieve all of it, right? Uh, um, and, and what we mean about the album writing itself is that we set out uh, on a different path of, of, on, on collecting songs, right? But, but somehow this album, which should be connected like it is now, which is more like a, a, a kaleidoscopic feel, mm -hmm. so to say, uh, of, of different uh, um, um, cultures and different things like that that combines it in, 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 a, in a new way here. Mm -hmm. uh, but how, how it comes to us is uh, we basically try to shut the door in, in our studio, right? And, and then we have our creative bubble alone, you know? Uh, and, and that creates the mode. Mm. 
Okay. And sometimes, actually, what I felt, for instance, with Anwana, uh, that Kai came with a, a lyric, and uh, I took one look at the page and I sang the song. So that was, it's, sometimes it really just comes. And yeah. sometimes we set the mood with uh, incense and blacking out the windows and really going into a creative bubble. But I must say that a lot of the material that Kai comes with feels like it already has a voice um, mm. and we just need to to find it and, and, and collect it. Okay, cool. Uh, do you have favorites in the album? Yeah, well... Well, I always uh, say that I, I don't have favorites, basically. Uh, as, as I consider the whole album one song, always. That's also like a bit my job in, in this to produce an album and, and make it feel like one, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's like the same as saying if you watch your favorite movie, which which scene is yeah. the best, right? Yeah. It's, it's the connection yeah. of, of, the, it's of the whole that that, that that makes it stand out to you, right? Yeah. Uh, but but I do think uh, Riff definitely is our best yet. Okay. Mm -hmm. I love Anwana. Yes, yeah. uh, I don't know. It's very close to my heart, and also Nesso. But yeah, if I can pick two, and Kai. Yeah, <coughs> uh, of course. Like in, when it comes down to it, it's always coming out of my feather. The first mm -hmm. tiny stone that makes the avalanche in the end, right? So I, I, uh, I'm attached to all of them in a, in a way, mm -hmm. and so as well like Christopher see the whole thing as a no not just drift you know for me it's like there's a map in my head that I try to go along you know with like pre uh, presenting stuff and that includes also the two other albums before right but um, for this album if I would have to nail it down to a song that is very clearly uh, Marduk because that contains stuff for the, that lead that lead me personally always back to a very special moment that uh, uh, that I had in the beginning of the of 2020, and uh, the sounds that I experienced in that moment, they a lot of them managed to get themselves into this this song, and of course they touch touch me every time still. Mm. Mm. Maria, you mentioned Nesso. It, it it's kind of special song you had a little moment when recording it you were crying also at the same time when you sang it it, it can be kind of being heard in that song if you listen to it mm -hmm. can you tell a little bit about it yeah well we knew that the, the the story behind the lyrics is that it's a healing spell to heal to cure a horse which leg was broken um, and when I was singing it I could also feel that it needed some pain in in the in the voice and then Kai said well try to imagine your dearest friend little dog Luna uh, if she was dying and that instantly provoked my such a big grief uh, and uh, but I chose to try to to use the grief and and really incorporate it in in the voice, which is the, the voice is such a, a wonderful tool because it's uh, it's very yeah emotions color it so mm. much. Absolutely. So uh, so yeah, I I did the recording and I come into the studio and I see both Kai and Chris sitting crying, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, oh, was it okay? And and then we listened to it and. I was very unsure if we should release it like this because it felt very naked. Um, mm. But then in the end we decided to keep it because a voice doesn't always have to be beautiful and pure and mm. all this. A voice, I think it's okay to show emotions and this song demanded that. Mm. And so so we allowed it to, to, to get it and yeah. Yeah, it suits to the song very well actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, about the other song, we absolutely have to talk about uh, Tenet. Yes. It's a musical palindrome, which means it's the same both backwards and forwards. The pieces are. Yeah. Can you tell uh, shortly uh, what it practically means and where did the idea come from? Okay, so so um, this is one of these situations where Kai can come in with, with an idea, and it begins just with a drawing of the Sasso Square lying lying on my desk, and I like. What is this? I could just see Kai sitting away in the corner, just, you know, waiting, you know? 
and and when I started to realize, I didn't know this. Uh, it's it's uh, it's found in in I believe in Pompeii, uh, right? The the neighbor city, but yeah. yes, yeah, yeah, in that area, <laughs> right? Um, and and it reads in four directions, which is insane. So you have like the same uh, five sentences that you can read in four uh, mm. uh, directions. And and we tried to come up with ideas how we musically could uh, achieve this, of course, right? Mm. Um, but it means also if you are recording like like just the Sato Square itself and you play it backwards, it will actually read the Sato Square, which we do, of course. But that's easy, right? Yeah. We also have to write melodies that will follow then the same backwards and forward and all that. And we we invented different types of uh, number codes and weird systems that we could. Uh, kind of uh, extrapolate uh, different parts of the music into being playing both forward and backwards, and we also try to figure out stuff like harmonically how we can go upwards and downwards. So it's, it's a very long. It took almost two years to make. So so it's yeah. uh, it was uh, quite some work to yeah. to to make that happen because it, of course it's fun when a thing can play the same backward and forward, mm. but. It also has to sound like music, right? Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so uh, uh, you know, uh, it, as the rare people will start to play it backwards, as we thought, until it came out, it took two hours before someone uploaded a backward <laughs> version to YouTube. Okay. But, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it, it was a, it was really challenging and 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 great fun to do this. Yeah. So the process was quite uh, long and took you some yeah, 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 efforts. Yeah. The yeah, yeah. heaviest uh, work we've done. So but it, it but it it is one of these direct uh, examples we have where where the album writes itself literally mm. because mm. we use the actual words uh, and 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 apply tones from the time like like harmonics from the time and also countings from the time and and uh, and, and convert that into a, a number system and the melody just came out from itself which is amazing mm. uh, so simple uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Easy. Everyone did it. Hmm. Uh, I uh, I'm not sure about this, but I didn't see Tenet on your previous set lists. Mm. Are you going to perform it in some of your ritual? Uh, not today. Not today. No. But maybe one day. Well, the day I learn to sing backwards, uh, that would be amazing to try. Yeah. It's one of the ones that we are going to work hard to get on stage, but it's going to take time. Yeah, I I believe so. Yeah. 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 Uh, and we decided also not to to rush the the new songs into the set also because because of a certain break of two years we mm. didn't feel that we got to play the previous album mm. uh, as much as it uh, deserved so we've been taking it uh, slowly but the, we have the we have uh, many many comments from the audience saying that it feels like a completely new show than what it did two years ago. Okay. It brought uh, a lot of new elements. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Exciting for us. So it's the moment for older songs too now. So yeah. uh, about making music, uh, you use many languages in your songs. How well do you know these languages? Like uh, do you have to gather vocabulary whenever you're making a song or do you do you know this? What kind of relationship do you have with all these languages? Well <coughs> I have a lot of books, <laughs> and uh, there's uh, in addition to the books, there's a lot of very very smart stuff out there from the universities, mm. and we have people of course that have that are officially smart with titles, you know, mm -hmm. that have like master degrees, bachelor degrees, and so on and so forth. So whenever I'm in doubt, I I have I actually have the chance to relatively quick get that information that mm. I that I clearly need, and. Um, yeah, so I love languages, and I'm not the only one in the in the group. And uh, it, it it really depends, right? It it really depends. Like for example, when back to the Sator Square, that is so brilliant, right? And it's like two thousand and whatever years old. I don't I don't know exactly, right? <coughs> but still, like I tried. I really put a lot of effort into to make something ma matching in a language that I'm safe in, right? I'm not safe in Latin, but it, you know, it's just too good. It's just too good. And there's a reason why it became so old and went through all the, all the cultures and all the times. Mm. Right? So there's a limit to everything, even with all the love. Mm. 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 
bit about the, about pronouncing uh, these ancient lyrics. Uh, some of it we we don't know. Some of it we have an indication in the languages alive today, like Icelandic. But in the end, we decided to make them ours, um, and it it springs out of uh, an idea I had in the very beginning uh, when I was. Uh, singing Norubo, uh, which is the Norwegian rune poem, mm -hmm. and it's in Old Norse, and uh, he said, make it yours, sing it in your local Norwegian dialect, yeah. and that's what I'm doing, and it feels, it felt so right. Yeah. So, I mean, if there was a, a Viking resurrected uh, meeting me, would probably say like, hey, you don't pronounce <laughs> that that way, but, uh, you know, uh, in the end, it's, it's our um, interpretation and our yeah. Our feeling for we'll make the piece. It your own. We we'll make it our own. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, let's get to the rituals. Uh, you said that a ritual is not obviously an act or or normal gig. It's something so much more natural, and it, you gather people together and everything. Uh, how about rehearsals? Do you do you practice? Um, yes and no. Uh, that's something you cannot uh, really prepare yourself for for, for, for a thing like this. But the, the we are now how many nationalities on, on board? Thirteen. Thirteen. Yeah. Uh, so 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 the thing is, it's kind of difficult to get them to one location uh, next to the to the rituals itself. So it is something we are developing the show as we go. Uh, so every show gets a little little new element, mm. and then that you know travels with to the next one and so on and so on so so the the path we are on right now is is basically what we set out with Lifa and uh, the first show and and and, uh, and 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 it's kind of just been developing itself on the road mm. uh, it, it's not like a, a thing we, we 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 bring to a, a regular practice situation you would see for mm. for a band right um, it's evolving so organically and it's very very interesting to see and we were talking about it yesterday like how much everything has changed although we play the, some of the same songs mm -hmm. it has changed so much and it comes from people being very passionate about the project and then thinking about how to improve it constantly like uh, for instance Aniki yesterday said hey what what about if I grab your drum in this and this piece and today we're gonna do that uh, because it's a great idea and uh, yeah so, so the, in, the intent is the same obviously it's the same source material the same thing we come mm -hmm. from but but uh, of course it grows and also a lot more people is with us on stage now right and yeah. then that gives yeah. it many more colors to, to to play with yeah but the rituals are never the completely same so no, no, yeah, no it will be evolves. unique uh, every time yeah. yeah yeah so there's a reason to go see them more than once <laughs> yeah yeah hopefully. uh what goes on in your mind during the ritual my mind, there's a lot of emptiness during the ritual because it has to be. Yeah, it's some kind of trance. Uh, yeah, I've got the idea. Like people who like take the coat or something like that, or touch the helmet, they're like, "Oh my God, you're what are you doing? How?" Right? And like I, I, I always say, I'm not doing it. You know, it's like I'm removing myself and just let it, let it flow. So there's like a lot of rituals or gigs concerts where i have like big gaps where i don't remember anything because mm. i'm just in some kind of trance right and uh, that also goes for the warrior choir they're they're also quite quite out there right and apart from that i'm very focused mm. i would guess mm. yeah yeah, I would say the same. Like it's a weird mix of being completely, completely focused and uh, out there uh, at the same time. And a concert feels like two minutes or an eternity. It's yeah. really time loses all perspective uh, for me. But we we also talk about many times that it's very different for the three of us. Like. Uh, Kai is uh, head in the sky. Chris has feet firmly planted on the ground because you have your responsibility is the technical part as well. Yeah, mm. but also that you know, my my brain is a conductor brain, so to say, mm. uh, and a composer brain. So so actually, what I'm thinking about m when when we are says is what everyone does, including myself. Mm. But mm. everyone mm. playing on stage at the same time, 
to to kind of ba- to to balance a little bit, you know yeah. how how the the how what what Kai is channeling through from 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 where where he gets that, you know, through his body into something that that then you know we can collect something in the now and put through speakers yeah. into the ears uh, of the audience, right? Of course, I do I do believe Heilung also. Uh, sends signals out through 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 other things than the speakers, right? But uh, but it, it's the mix of the different yeah. things that makes a, a high long ritual what it is, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Um. We see many kinds of instruments on the stage, and they are very unique and very sacred and handmade and everything. And there's human bones, and there's your own blood used. Um, how do you and where do you get these? Like uh, when we're talking about human bones, I I don't think it's very easy. You don't you don't walk up to someone in a bar and ask nicely for that. That's for sure. <laughs> we yeah. usually take them from journalists that ask too many questions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, <clears throat> the the human bones they're they're also coming from from my from my part. So. Um, quick law stuff in Denmark it is legal to mm. possess okay. human remains and also trade with them. That's mm. different in the surrounding countries. That is one of the reasons why I really hate to break it to you, but tonight we're not gonna have human bones. Mm. Yeah, it's it's not easy to take them to other countries. Yeah, yeah, you you can't for example fly with them. To no, other no, it's yeah. it really it gives you gives you a lot of trouble if they mm-hmm. if they find out, right? And it's also a matter of respect, right? Yeah. Because like the moment you are you're at that stage of your life where it's only bones left, you would like to rest naturally, right? Mm. 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 And uh, but still you know, when it comes to, to shamanism or spirituality, like uh, whatever you might think about the word itself, there is a certain power in these things. And how they, you know, I I believe that I don't get them, they come to me. Mm. So uh, that's a good point at this uh, point when uh, you have these instruments and you you get the sound from nature and you you create sounds that are from nature so are you working on new instruments all the time or is it when, when you're creating new music you have to get something new or are you always working on with what you already have okay, yes uh, well uh, for instance for for some of the Roman pieces we had on on, 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 on the latest album we were getting you know, accurate instrument recreations to, to do this, right? Uh, so, so it's very often that an instrument or an artifact follows the piece, I would say, almost every, th- every time, right? But there's also t- times where uh, we are forced to build something if we want to bring it to the stage, mm. so to say, right? So, so a good example of that is actually in Anuana, where uh, Ma- Maria is uh, started to, uh, to play the 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 Yuhiko, actually, mm-hmm. which I believe is a Finnish instrument, uh, and and um, a part of the soundscape that we are creating in the studio is that we play it at half speed, those it becomes deeper, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but that is kind of impossible to do for real. So that that's therefore we 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 build a new instrument that can do that, right? That we did not have uh, available for us uh, in the recording process. So sometimes. These things, uh, you know, there there needs to be a solution for for the for the uh, different yeah. mediums we are mm, playing yeah. in. Mm. But we always uh, we always search. I mean, there there's always music around. It can be two rocks that sounds amazing when we're out taking a walk, or a, a bronze fork that Kai found on the flea market that just has an amazing cling oh. sound. Or so there's always um, a curiosity towards uh, things that we meet in our path. When you were in the U.S. now, you you got an amazing gift uh, from a fan. Uh, gifted you a, a gong, like a huge ass gong. So that's going to dictate maybe something when mm. we come back because mm. now this came to Kai and it will hopefully, you know. And in general, the studio it has a, an enormous collection of weird artifacts that can yeah. make sounds. You I know? Agree with that. <laughs> it's it's quite fun. Yeah. Um. You do rituals all over the world. Right now you're in a massive tour. Uh, do you think and do you see that there is differences between your brothers and sisters all around the world? Do they differ from each other? 
yeah, they're different in the way they uh, how they react when they are out amongst people. I think sitting in your own house, the reactions are maybe more similar. But when you're out and maybe you're conscious about your surroundings, it's not like in the U.S. people are very loud and very they are amplified people like they are giving it all shouting coming dressed up with costumes and makeup and i believe the finnish crowd is more more silent uh, so i'm curious for tonight yeah but um, Tuska, they were loud. pretty loud Tuska, they were very loud yeah. so let's see what the helsinki t- crowd can do tonight, tonight they are on ice though they are but the <laughs> Finns are used to that yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think they should remove the thing so they could be skating. skating. <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. wow. <laughs> yeah, but there will be Heilung on ice tonight. Okay, mm. that would be a good, great concept. <laughs> um, Heilung is not just a band that makes songs and throws a gig, gig with band on the stage. It's it's a huge concept, if you can say that. But but um, what's that one thing for you that's the most important and what you enjoy the most? doing this thing? Me? Mm. Oh, yeah. You can start. Hard to say. <laughs> when it comes to touring, you mean? Yeah, uh, doing the whole Heilung, you know, creating music and oh, throwing rituals. In the, in the rituals. Heilung universe, universe, what I enjoy yeah, most? Yeah. Going out in the nature. Okay. Clearly. Going out in the nature, searching for a good spot to record something, searching for instruments or like just going out and like you know free the mind that because like there's a lot of you know there's a lot of spirituality in there there's a lot of shamanism in there and like you know when it comes to shamanism whatever you might think about the word it is always attached to the land so the power comes from the land the Mm. moment you remove me or you the moment you're me you remove the shaman from the land the shaman is powerless yeah you know so he would need someone with like when the shaman comes to another country he would meet someone that is actually local from the country that feeds him with the spirit yeah. right and if that is not there which is the regular thing yeah. the shaman has a hard time yeah right? so like for me not easy touring sorry? when you're uh, living in hotels and stuff yes yeah. Tour- touring for me is nothing to enjoy yeah. that's necessity that's pure necessity and yeah. whenever there is someone from the land we're playing on that comes to uh, to the ritual mm. and opens up for us as you see it in america then i start enjoying because someone is actually connecting me to what I need, yes. right? Uh, otherwise, the rest just comes out of out of myself, or like you know, comes from however it is possible to to give. Um, for me, touring is uh, a, a wonderful time because I I, I enjoy uh, I enjoy social uh, socialness a lot, and I enjoy the group very much. And um, yeah, traveling with this bunch of people, they are crazy in such a heartwarming way. That's my only, I mean, on the boat from Stockholm to here is a perfect example. They had a competition who could get the most uh, uh, middle-aged women up on the dance floor. <laughs> like, it, it's it's so, it's, it was amazing. I just come into there to see where they were and I see like, 12 o'clock, uh, five of the warriors are having the biggest party with like, <laughs> Yeah, 20 women. It was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I laugh a lot and uh, yeah, I think it's uh, it's wonderful. We get to see a lot of uh, the world and it's, oh. uh, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, for me also, it's, it's the connection of everything. You know, it's, it's, it's different platforms, right? Like when you're creating in a studio, for instance, mm. you're really much in a bubble for yourself. And and you have to look inwards a lot to 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 make the thing. But when you're out touring, that is the time where you go from being an introvert to an extrovert, right? You have to open up yeah. and share this yeah. bubble with other people, right? Including, of course, your own crew, but are in, se- in, in definitely also everyone attending our rituals, right? We we usually say that everyone is creating the evening, and that is very much true, right? Mm-hmm. It's not only what is happening on stage uh, or at the individual at the stage. It's the it's the collection of everyone in the room mm. that makes the evening what it is, right? Mm. Uh, and the, the 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 unique color of of the day, right? But also, like like when we are traveling, we get to see beautiful places, also, yeah. right? Because we we do not play every day. We 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 take time off also in between to recharge, and that usually comes with a beautiful area where we can go and experience something, right? So also, so we don't end up in a situation where we will 
you know, accidentally say hello Stockholm in Oslo or something like that, right? <laughs> As other artists yeah. have to do, and I do understand it if you only see the inside of a bus yeah. uh, and stuff yeah. like that, yeah. right? Uh, so, so we, we try to to you know accommodate everything, and and it's the variety and and all these beautiful souls, you know, for me that 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 is connected to this thing, mm. uh, that 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 makes it uh, amazing because everyone tried to to reach the same goal but for, for different uh, areas, so to say, right? Yeah, Highland um, music is very uh, ordinary, uh, but do you have uh, role models, musical role models? No, I don't. Yeah, well, uh, for me, vocal-wise, I have many, uh, many beautiful voices out there to take inspiration uh, from and learn how to master my own uh, instruments. Uh, so, of course, Björk is a big. Uh, inspiration for me, but uh, also Anneli Drekker from Norway, uh, Hedning Anna, the two uh, Finnish girls, uh, how they make their voices so they are heard through uh, through the many drums. Uh, so, so yeah, um, vocal-wise I have many, but we do tend to not listen a lot um, to music uh, when we are in production mm. mode. We keep the, the sheet clean, so to say. I know that you you have a bit different also at least when you were working uh, in the studio as a tattoo artist you would listen a lot. Yeah, like music musical role models, I would I would have to say would be Tibetan monks. Mm. Really, mm. Because yeah, yeah. Because what, they, what they do is very complex in the in the throat, mm. and like when you read into it, it's they're not just performing something outstanding, but what is also going on in their head is fucking amazing because mm. they're visualizing something you know and like the the vocal work is only a 30 percent of the actual work that they do when 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 they're when they're making their rituals mm. so like role models they, they would be my role models yeah. mm. uh, but well for me it wouldn't be humans <laughs> so, so for me it, it's the nature itself right mm. because uh, uh, they, it sounds like chaos to many but but like if you listen into a waterfall or if you listen to the ocean or or the wind through leaves in forest. It sounds maybe, you know, if you're not listening close enough, as cares. But there is a logic to it in a way, right? And and I believe music be, began as as humans tried to mimic nature around them, like like we like we built buildings that mimics the stars or, or anything, right? Uh, and and uh, and and there is a certain sort of logic into it that I think maybe have been forgotten a little bit, right? And for me, that is like the most beautiful symphony you you can imagine, right? So to sit out and and listen to this uh, and try to to be inspired by it. Mm, that's great, and you don't have to have any people as role mm. models. No, you can, you uh, can take your inspiration from. But wherever. then the earth is definitely my. Uh, my <laughs> that's a great answer. Thank you. <laughs> I have the howling monkey then. Howler yeah. Monkey, yeah. Howler That's actually my profile <laughs> picture yeah. on the on Slack. The, on Slack. <laughs> okay, nice. Uh, well, now you have your third album out and great tour going on here. You have what a nice moment going on, but what are your dreams or hopes or goals for the future? Well, uh, to survive this would be nice. Uh, <laughs> um, no, but uh, we... Um, we are on a path, as you can also hear from what Kai was talking about earlier, that we, we have a, a list of things that and, and, and a direction that we are following. And uh, and Brief was actually only a, a fraction of, of what we had work, been working on. Uh, so there's a lot more going on. And my dream is definitely to finish all these things. But, but Heilung has a tendency to... So every time you finish one thing, you know there's you know twice as much stuff waiting. You sort of say, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so so it's, uh, let's see. We're putting out the tr the the rails while the train is yeah. going. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, going fast. Yeah, but there's yeah there's new material. There is the computer game for Ninja Theory from Ninja Theory Hellblade coming out uh, at one point, hopefully soon. That's going to be very exciting uh, to follow that to the end. And uh, yeah, I'm also uh, excited about going to Asia yeah. in March, Australia and Bangkok. So yeah. My dream is to uh, at one day realize what we dreamed of when we really started all this. Mm -hmm. So, and that that was like a 
360 degree performance you know where people would, would be all around and be an actual part of the ceremony oh, cool. you know because yeah. like a lot of or the majority of ceremonies pre-christian ceremonies is performed circular or at least resembling something like that and uh, that was our maybe my dream vision however you want to call it from the beginning but of course you know the reality collision is something which is like permanently happening right especially when you have a weird mind like mine mm. and uh, that that would be my dream to at, at some point you know just come to a place which is actually resembling the world you know or the world yeah, you know yeah. and uh, yeah perform perform uh, circular that you know that there's no yeah, that everyone is like surrounding us, listening to it, be really being part of it, not mm -hmm. just watching it. Yeah. And, and uh, yeah, it's a bigger choir, yeah. 900 warriors yeah. instead, so, instead so of so nine. You, as, as you can hear, Kai is not in charge of budgets. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, or logistics. Uh, but, yeah. But, so yeah, please uh, spread the word so we can get more dreams, people. Right? Dreams, <laughs> dreams are endless. <laughs> dreams, uh, they're they're unlimited but, still. But but it's not impossible, and 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 you know, we have this. We made this drawing in the beginning, you know, where we like made our favorite, you know, okay, how can it be, right? Yeah. And 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 that reality wall was a lot taller that time, you know, than it. So so we are like yeah. taking it down brick by brick to get there, you know. Okay. Uh, but, but yeah. Those are great things to dream about, and you you certainly have things to go for. Um, thank you so much for your time, and I wish you a great tour. Thank you. Thank you. Great Thank you so inspiration much. with new material. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you.